Hello everyone, I hope you are having a great day and enjoying your Blue Dog Odyssey. Today I thought I'd make a quick video on how to do some homemade watercolor paints. Many of you may not have access to watercolors at home and I thought we could learn how to make homemade non-toxic watercolor paints so you can enjoy some painting while we are at home doing the Odyssey together. You're gonna need some basic supplies um, that you might be able to find in your pantry. Uh, you're gonna need some food coloring, just the liquid food coloring. If you have the gel food coloring, even better. You're gonna need some baking soda, cornstarch, white or light corn syrup, vinegar, some mixing bowls, some measuring utensils, and a spoon, okay? So um, I'm gonna get my document camera set up, and then I'm gonna show you how to do that. When we are ready to pour the paints, you're gonna to need to put them in something like this, like an ice cube tray, or an old egg carton that's been cleaned out, okay? So you need just one of those to pour your um, base into before we mix our colors. So I'm gonna get my document camera started and then I'm gonna switch over to that. So it's gonna take me one second here. Okay, so you should see my document camera. And in that, in my mixing bowl here, I am going to put four tablespoons of sodium bicarbonate. Now, sodium bicarbonate mixed with vinegar, and vinegar is a mixture of water and acetic acid, that's going to make a chemical reaction. And it's going to give us carbon dioxide gas, which are the bubbles that form when we pour vinegar into baking soda. So here's one tablespoon. I need four. Two. Three. Four. Now, when you do your vinegar, make sure you do it gradually so you don't overflow your container because it will foam pretty big. All right, so I'm gonna do two tablespoons of white vinegar. So I'm gonna pour my first tablespoon in. And you should see lots of bubbles, lots of carbon dioxide gas, another tablespoon. That's really fun. Okay, now I'm going to just slowly mix that. And eventually the fizzing is going to stop because all of the acetic acid is going to be mixing with the sodium bicarbonate and the reaction will be finished. Okay. That's nice and mixed up. Okay. Now I'm going to add just a half a teaspoon of light corn syrup. This is going to act kind of like a binder. Keep all right now. Corn syrup's so thick, so I'm just gonna stick that in. Here's our light corn syrup. Okay, all right. And then I'm going to need a couple of tablespoons of corn starch. So I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna show you on, on another side something fun about cornstarch that's also science related. So a couple of tablespoons of cornstarch. Now you'll notice my cornstarch has made my liquid really thick, okay? You see that? It's really hard to mix these colors together. So you just want to be really careful. Keep going. I might need to add a little more vinegar to this. Soften this up. Okay, I'm going to add a little more vinegar. I'm gonna add another tablespoon to see where that gets me. 
lots of bubbles. Okay, that looks good. I think it needed another tablespoon just to be mixed up really well. This will get me started. You can make a number of these batches. You can double the recipe to make more paint all at once, or you can do it in small batches like this. It's a little easier to work with. Okay. That's kind of the consistency you want. You want it to be pourable. It might be a little sticky. So if you want to keep just kind of going back and forth between your vinegar and cornstarch until you get the right thickness. I'm gonna add just a little more cornstarch to that. Oh yeah, that's really good. Okay. Now, I don't know if any of you know a fancy little term for when you mix cornstarch and water together, but it's called an oobleck. There's a fun book by Dr. Seuss that I'll put in a link at the bottom called Bartholomew and the Oobleck. I want you to read that. You can watch it on YouTube as a read aloud. It's really quite fun. So I'm going to include that for you guys. But this is a good consistency. It's thick but yet still pourable, okay? So an oobleck, I'm gonna move this mixing bowl and show you. Okay, so an oobleck is when you mix cornstarch with water. Now it's called a non-Newtonian fluid. Sir Isaac Newton has devised that liquids behave a certain way under certain temperatures and pressures, but cornstarch when mixed with water doesn't behave the same way. So I'm gonna mix really slowly, just some water and some cornstarch until I get the consistency I want. Some of you might have already played with this at home. I'm just gonna mix water just really slowly in my cornstarch until I get what I'm looking for here. Okay, so it's, it's getting there. So what is an oobleck? It's when you take cornstarch and water and you mix it together and when it is under pressure or stress it becomes a solid and when it's left to sit it will become a liquid again so i'm going to show you what i mean Let's see if I can put this in my hand. All right, so when I squeeze this, it's a solid, but as I let it sit, it becomes a liquid. Squeeze solid, and then it becomes a liquid. That is an oobleck or a non-Newtonian fluid. Lots of fun to play with. Also safe for your hands to touch, okay? Unless you have a corn allergy. All right, so. That is an oobleck. Now back to our base. So now that I have this mixture, I'm going to be pouring it into my ice cube tray. Okay, so I'm just gonna pour a little bit into each of my wells. You don't wanna fill them all the way up. You wanna leave room for your food coloring. I'm just gonna start off putting I'm gonna just make six colors today, but feel free to experiment with color mixing at home. If you have lots of food coloring pastes, then you can make a lot of colors at home, but 
if you're just restricted to the typical grocery store three or four colors you can still mix several colors at home okay so i have that evenly divided into my ice cube trays so here's where we get to do some color theory now we're going to start off with our primary colors so remember that our primary colors are red. So I'm gonna put about, I don't know, four or five drops, maybe six drops of red food coloring in one, and then stir it. Remember, oops, I got a little bit of the other side. That's okay, I'll have to make that one orange. Okay, so remember that the pigment will show up lighter on your paper than it is in the tray. Just keep that in mind. Okay, so my next primary color is yellow. So I'm going to put some yellow as its next door neighbor. One, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe another extra one there. Make sure you clean your spoon off in between so your colors don't get mixed up together. I'm gonna mix this one around. There's some yellow. We have ketchup and mustard. All right, now I'm going to make the third primary color, which is blue. Okay, there's some blue. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm just mixing that around with my spoon. Be careful. Such a pretty color. Okay, now. I'm going to start my primary mixing. Now, you guys remember primary colors, the three colors we start with, when we do our secondary colors, we have to use our primary colors in combination to get them. So I already had a little bit of red spill over in this one. So I'm going to make this one orange. So you already know red is one of the colors you need to make orange. What do you think the other one is? If you've guessed yellow, you are correct. So I'm going to squirt. Now I used three, so I'm probably gonna use like four or five yellow because red's pretty strong. I'm gonna mix those colors together and see if I get orange. That's a nice orange, okay. Great. Now we're gonna mix our next one. So I'm gonna stick with yellow. And then if I mix yellow, I've already mixed with red to get orange, but if I mix yellow with something else, I get green. One, two, three, four, five. What color do you think I need to mix with yellow to get green? You said blue. You are correct. Now I'm only gonna start off with a drop of blue, mix it and see if I need more, because blue is so strong. Okay. I might add a little bit more blue to that, just a little, maybe like a half a drop. There we go. Very pretty. Now, as you do your color mixing, and you wanna make more colors, you can think about mixing your green with yellow to make a lighter spring green. You can mix your green and blue to make a pretty aqua or a turquoise. So you can come up with mixing red and purples. Remember, if we mix contrasting colors though, or complementary colors, that we end up with browns. So if you want a brown, start mixing up your complementary colors. Okay, so, and this one I'm gonna go with blue. 
And what color do I need to mix with blue to get purple? If you guessed red, you are correct. Okay, so let's see if this makes a nice purple and which way I need to go. More blue or more red? Let's see. It's a very dark color. very brown right now. So let's add some more blue. More red. There we go. And that is a very dark purple. Still got a bit of a brown base, but we'll go with it for today. Okay, so after you have done all of this mixing, now you're going to have to be patient and wait. So I'm going to switch over to, I'm going to turn my document camera off and switch over There we go. So you're gonna to have to allow these to dry, depending on your humidity in your house, anywhere from 24 to 48 hours. But once they're dry, they're gonna be hard, like your traditional watercolor pan paints, and you're just gonna need some water and a paintbrush to activate your color, and then you're ready to go. So if you want to try this, I recommend you do that pretty soon if you want to use them for our first art project, which is coming up soon once we get to New Orleans together. So go ahead and try it. Have some fun mixing and making some chemical reactions in your kitchen. But for now, I just hope that you guys are well and that you are enjoying your time at home. Take care. Bye-bye.